All right. Welcome to working papers topic for auditing. So for this discussion, our objective objectives will be to have a knowledge of what is working paper and its usefulness, different kinds of working paper, working paper as part of audit work, and working paper as basis of the opinion. Now when you talk about working papers, these are so-called tools in capturing evidences that we obtain from our field work. Okay, so of course the evidence will be the basis of our audit opinion. It can be either in paper, film, or electronic media. Different types of working paper as stated in ISA 230 Appendix 3. Okay, we have audit programs, analysis, issues memoranda, summaries of significant matters, letters of confirmation and representation, checklists, and correspondence, which will include emails concerning significant matters. So the auditor may include abstracts or copies of entities' records. So for example, if you want uh, to obtain invoices, copies of invoices, or journals, or ledger, this will be part of audit documentation. But it should be noted that audit documentation will not be a substitute for entities accounting records. So what's the purpose of uh, having audit documentation? Audit documentation is, of course, part of the requirement of ISA or International Standards of Auditing, uh, which requires a specific documentations. So the first one is this will be the evidence of the auditor's basis for the conclusion about the achievement of overall objectives of the auditor and evidence that the audit was planned and performed in accordance with ISAs and applicable legal and regulatory requirements. So, uh, in each country, there will be different requirements on how to keep and retain working papers. These requirements will be required by legal or regulatory agencies. So for example, IPA here in Papua New Guinea. Uh, if it is bank, that will be uh, under the Bank of Papua New Guinea regulations. So which means there will be different requirements in each regulatory agencies. So we have to look into that requirements. Now with regards to form, content, and of audit documentation, of course, the auditor shall prepare audit documentation that is sufficient to enable an experienced auditor having no previous connection with the audit to understand the nature, timing, and extent of audit procedures performed to comply with ISAs and applicable legal and regulatory requirements. So which means, even if I am an, uh, uh, let us say, experienced auditor, if I uh, try to review or do audit for a client, it will be uh, quite easy for me to understand what's or what was happened during the audit. And of course, I have to understand what are the requirements, whether it's legal or regulatory. Of course, the audit documentation should include the result of the audit procedures performed and what are the evidences that obtained and significant matters arising during the audit, the conclusion reached thereon, 
and significant professional judgment made in reaching those conclusions. So these are important for any auditor who will be working uh, and also continuing the work of the previous auditor. The auditor shall assemble the audit documentation in an audit file and complete the administrative process of assembling the fi final audit file on a timely basis after the audit or after the date of the auditor's report. After the assembly of the final audit file has been completed, the auditor shall not delete or discard audit documentation of any nature before the end of its retention period. Now, with regards to retention period, there are different requirements by, again, regulatory agencies. Some will require at least 5 years retention period, some will require 7, some will require 10. So as an auditor, you need to be aware of how long you need to retain the audit file before you discard it. In circumstances other than those envisaged in paragraph ISA 260.13, where the auditor finds it's necessary to modify existing audit documentation or add new audit documentation after the assembly of the final audit file has completed or has been completed, the auditor, regardless of the nature of uh, modification of or addition, should document the specific reason why we are making them and when and by whom they were made and reviewed so meaning if you have or if you need to change uh, the audit documentation after the audit file final audit file has been completed you need to be aware or you need to document what why you are changing it and when and uh, who will be the one to make or made the review. There are two categories of working papers. The first one is permanent file, uh, which contains uh, data that can be useful for audit in uh, future engagements. While the other one, current file, most likely the information that you have in current file will be useful for current year's audit program. Though, in the next audit year, you can refer to the, uh, this previous current file, but the usefulness will not be that much for the, current, uh, for the next uh, audit period. So usually, a uh, permanent file will have uh, extract of companies of memorandum and articles of association, copies of long-term operating agreement arrangement, or contracts such as lease, superannuation plans, profit sharing and bonus agreement, and labor contracts, analytical review, schedules from prior years, and internal control structure if you documented it, and information re relevant to audit planning. So as you can see, these uh, samples of uh, permanent file will be useful not only for the current audit but in future audit years. So in preparing working papers, we have uh, these essential parts. The first one is heading. Uh, which should contain the name of the entity, description of title of uh, what will be the content of the working paper, uh, of course, balance sheet date, or which period it's covering. The next part is index number. This index number will be like page number, which will be used as a reference or references when you do uh, other audit. Okay, so some will have a different way, but an example will be here, A-1 or B-2 and so on. Some can, can have a different way, maybe two letters, two digits, 
Okay, again, it's up to how the auditor had decided on doing the index indexing. Okay. Next essential part is cross-referencing. So as I mentioned to you, if you have the index numbers, you can cross-refer uh, one working paper to another working paper. So let's give an example. Okay, uh, if you audited uh, cash, okay, uh, let us say cash receipt. It can be a reference to uh, receivables when you're auditing receivables because receivables will have collection of uh, money from customers, okay? which, of course, previously had the sale on credit. So that is uh, what we call cross-referencing. So index number will be useful in this particular part. Okay, when you talk about evidence, so when you're identifying the evidence that you collected, the common practice is to use tick marks or symbols, okay? So maybe asterisk, when you say confirmation had been performed, okay? So meaning you collected confirmations from third party. You can also uh, say X, okay? Just an example, X when you perform observation and you collected physical evidence and so on. Now, it should be noted that if you use tick marks, it should be unique for each procedure that you performed. Okay, of course, in, uh, one of the essential parts of the working paper is conclusion. You have to provide the result of your procedures and indicate uh, whether they confirm a particular assertion being tested. So, for example, your audit purpose is to uh, observe uh, or inspect uh, particular equipment. Okay, so the assertion that you are testing there will be, of course, existence. Okay, so in your conclusion, you have to mention. What is the audit procedure that you perform? Maybe you went uh, to the site and physically inspect and see the equipment. And then you have to confirm whether you uh, tested that assertion. Okay. So again, the assertion that you're testing is, is existence. So you have to confirm whether you have tested that uh, particular assertion, in this case, existence. And of course, signature and uh, dates. Someone has to prepare the working paper. Someone has to review the working uh, paper. And also the dates when it was prepared and reviewed should be visible. Now, in reviewing a working paper, okay, the reviewer is primarily interested in the work done by the uh, preparer uh, or the let us say the staff auditor what are the evidences obtained and what are the conclusions uh, reached by the preparer now with regards to ownership and custody of working papers uh, the rights of working paper rest with the auditor if he or she is acting as independent contractor working papers prepared at the auditor's request by the entity's staff also belong to the auditor. In the absence of any agreement, the ownership belongs to the principal auditors if in case you are doing group audits. Okay, so meaning uh, if you are, let us say, the component auditor, which means you are auditing the sub, uh, subsidiary of the uh, principal company, so the principal auditor, if there is no agreement, the principal auditor will be the owner of the working paper. Again, if you are acting as a component auditor. Just to, to clarify, component auditor is the auditor of the subsidiary. The auditor should adopt appropriate procedure for or procedures for 
maintaining the confidentiality and safe custody, integrity, accessibility, and retrievability of the audit documentation or of the working papers. Okay, continuation of ownership and custody of working papers. A successor auditor will uh, may have access to working paper of the predecessor auditor with the client approval. So meaning, if you are new in the engagement and there was a previous auditor, you can have access, but you need client approval. Okay, so that you can have the access from the pre of the previous working paper. Physical custody of working papers rests with the auditor and he or she is responsible for their safekeeping. Working papers include permanent file are retained indefinitely. Okay, so which means if you are discarding uh, papers or working papers, take note that the permanent file are retained indefinitely. Okay, so only the current file should be discarded or discarded after the retention period. Current working papers should be uh, retained for as long as they are useful to the auditor in servicing an entity or needed to satisfy legal or professional requirements for record retention. Under ISA 230.823, okay, it states that the retention period should no sh should uh, be no shorter than five years from the date of auditor's report or if latter of the group auditor's report And that ends my presentation our reference for this presentation is ISA 230 audit documentation Thank you